far infrared heat for better acupuncture treatments, but more importantly, why you need it is going to be the topic that we're going to talk about today. I am Dr. Adrian Larson. I'm joined by Dr. Kimberly Thompson and uh, appreciate having her here with us. So first question, and this is a big one, what is infrared? There's a lot of confusion, honestly, about infrared. Uh, and when it comes to infrared, I actually see things all the time that that people don't quite understand about it or they think it's one thing when it's really another. And so let's just start with some real basics. I promise it won't get confusing. And let's talk about what infrared is. So the word infrared uh, comes from the prefix, the Latin prefix infra, which simply means below and red. And so it means frequencies of light that are just below those of the visible red light in the in the visible spectrum. That's pretty simple, um, easy to understand. When you look at the visible spectrum, you've got this range of visible light. Over on the left side, you see we have the reds and it goes through the old Roy G. Biv, the colors of the rainbow starting with red and ending up on the on the right side there with violet and then ultraviolet up at the higher end of the spectrum. Now, a couple of things I want to point out about this slide. First of all, if you look down at the low end, so the left side of this slide, you'll see that there are radio waves, you know, AM, FM, television, all of the things that we kind of use every day. And those really don't have uh, too bad biological effects, you know, when you're, unless you happen to be very near a radio transmitter or something like that. These have been in use for 100 years and they don't really do a lot to us, uh, to our bodies. You get into infrared and you start to have more biological effects. You get into the visible spectrum. These are the things that our eyes respond to that uh, we can view. And you, you can see that as humans, we are tuned to only be able to perceive and respond to a very, very small sliver of the electromagnetic spectrum. Well, moving on up the spectrum then, we hit ultraviolet, and now we start to have stronger and stronger biological effects. Ultraviolet light becomes dangerous because, as you know, it can cause sunburns, it can cause DNA damage in the skin, it ultimately can cause cancer, long-term exposure to it. And once we get up above ultraviolet, we get into x-rays, uh, Cumulative exposure there can be dangerous, cancer causing, and it doesn't take a lot. So we measure our X-ray exposure in terms of split seconds to take X-rays. Gamma rays, um, that becomes even more dangerous. It's no longer a question of cumulative. You can be killed rather very quickly by a high dose of gamma radiation. And so you can see the low end there, very safe. The high end there, very dangerous to us as humans. And infrared falls down in the safe end, down below visible light, but where biological activity starts, right where you want it. Now, when you think about sunlight, if you go outside, today it's a beautiful day here in Idaho that Kimberly uh, mentioned. I wish you could see outside. It's gorgeous. It's sunny. The leaves have turned. It's beautiful. But when I look out my window, the things that I see is about 44% of what the sun is giving off that makes it through the ozone layer and through the atmosphere and actually gets to the surface of the earth. About 44% of what we of, of um, what the sun gives off is the visible spectrum that we see. About 4% of the sunlight out there is the high frequency ultraviolet rays. These are the ones that are gonna cause sunburn and so on. And about 52% is the low frequency stuff, the infrared. The infrared is what we experience as heat. So that's why sunshine on your face feels so warm when a flashlight on your face doesn't feel warm at all. It's because of the wavelengths. Over half of that sunlight is heat and our bodies perceive the infrared wavelengths as heat. We can't see them, but we can certainly feel them. That's also why when you go outside on a, on a cold day where the air is really chilly, like it's starting to get in the mornings here, but there's bright sunlight, you feel warmed by that sunlight, even though the air is very chilly. When on the other hand, you could have warm air outside, but have heavy cloud cover and not much sunlight and a little breeze, and you can feel like you're freezing 
because you're not getting that infrared on your skin. Now in the visible spectrum, where infrared is down here at the non-visible end of it, there is something that you need to keep in mind. And here's the other picture of it down on the left side there. And that is far infrared is the farthest down from the visible spectrum. So if you look at the bottom of this slide, you see that we start out with red on the right. And that's the, the tail end of what's visible. Then you get into near infrared, medium infrared, and far infrared. These are all um, noted categorized by their wavelengths and the wavelengths that are longer are the far infrared wavelengths so we're talking about something that is uh, kind of far away from the visible portion of the spectrum and for those that are really interested it's you know three to 100 micrometer wavelengths and in the infrared wavelengths only far infrared transfers energy purely in the form of heat the medium and near infrared transfer energy in in ways that aren't as perceived as heat um, and and in some cases you know kind of have some visible aspect to them so when we talk about far infrared we're really talking about the area of the spectrum you want to be in it has longer wavelengths they penetrate more deeply into the body different measurements depending on the source of the far infrared and its intensity give penetration depths from one to 12 centimeters or basically up to about five five and a half inches of penetration depending on your source of far infrared and this is good because you're going to be able to get deep and influence the tissues where you want to influence them so a couple of other things to know about infrared first hopefully it's obvious by now that technically speaking infrared radiation is light and don't let that word radiation scare you radiation simply means energy that is given off or radiated it can be in the form of radio waves visible light x-rays all of that is radiation some is dangerous some is not infrared is not dangerous and technically it's light it's just light that we can't see we feel it as heat which i think is really cool or warm okay let's talk about the biological effects of far infrared this is really what we're interested in now that the science lesson is over what does it do to the body why do I want it so I'm going to highlight several studies here hang with me some of these are really interesting once we get through the studies we're going to get into some even more interesting stuff but I want you to realize that far infrared is very well studied very well documented and it harks back to practices that are literally thousands of years old healing practices and healing traditions that go back thousands of years where people have been using far infrared with great effect so we'll talk about that as well far infrared exposure in the first bullet it induces phosphorylation of endothelial nitric oxide synthase and nitric oxide generation all right translation in english it causes your body to produce nitric oxide in the blood which causes blood vessels to dilate so that's the take-home point there blood vessels dilate they open up and you get better circulation because you have better circulation you get better perfusion better oxygenation of the tissues you bring in uh, fuel you you export waste more efficiently Better, uh, better circulation just has huge benefits all around. And long-term exposure, repeated exposure to far infrared in studies has shown that it causes angiogenesis. You may recall angiogenesis means the production of blood vessels. So when you have an area of poor circulation, repeated long-term exposure to far infrared radiation causes you to actually develop new blood vessels and actually develop new circulation in areas that have poor circulation so it not only feels good and makes you warm for the time being while you're actually receiving the treatment but it has long-term important effects that physically change your body which is really cool also has been shown to decrease inflammation through hydrogen peroxide scavenging and cox2 inhibition and it increases cellular metabolism although the mechanisms how it does that are not very well understood 
which is really interesting. When you look at visible red light increasing cellular, cellular metabolism, that information is well understood and they can tell you exactly what steps happen, how the light causes a change in the conformation of a particular molecule. With far infrared, the mechanism is much less understood and yet it's there and it works. Studies have shown far infrared induces faster wound healing, uh, improved quality of life in type 2 diabetes patients was an interesting study, um, which frankly that study I think improved quality of life for anybody, whether they have type 2 diabetes or not, is a result of far infrared treatment. Rheumatoid arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis both showed reductions in pain, stiffness, and fatigue with far infrared treatment. Um, improved cardiac and vascular function and reduced oxidative stress in patients with chronic heart failure. And we'll look a little more into that in a few minutes. There was a study on allergic rhinitis causing people who have um, eye itching, nasal itching, nasal stuffiness, rhinorrhea, or in other words, runny nose, sneezing, all significantly improved with far infrared treatment to the sinuses. Remember how it penetrates, it gets into the tissues, it causes changes, decreases inflammation and increases circulation. So allergy symptoms improved greatly. Dysmenorrhea, painful symptoms during menstruation improved with far infrared treatment to the lower abdomen and statistically significant improvements in uh, depression patients. Somatic complaints, meaning physical complaints, um, improvements in hunger and improvements in ability to feel relaxed. Okay, a few more studies here. Chronic pain relief. The treatment group receiving far infrared therapy exhibits, exhibited diminished pain behaviors and had lower anger scores. I thought that was cool because when you're in chronic pain, you tend to be um, a little more irritable. It's hard to live with chronic pain. It's, it's disastrous for your psyche and your mental well-being. And so the fact that you can not only improve pain, but help people feel better, improve their quality of life is really important. After two years, follow-up study revealed that 77% of the infrared treatment group had been able to go back to work. Only 50% of the non-treatment group had returned to work. That's really cool. Blood pressure. Hypertension, high blood pressure, of course, is um, an epidemic of modern society. And uh, you know, half your patients over 40 are on blood pressure meds. And it's been shown that far infrared treatment, repeated treatment, significantly lowered systolic blood pressure. And it also uh, lowered oxidative stress as measured in urinary, urinary levels of 8 epi PGF2 alpha. Obesity and hypertension. There was a study done where they had a group that exercised and a group that did the same exercise but added far infrared treatment. And the far infrared treatment group lost 1.8 times as much weight, that's almost double the weight loss, and 4.6 times as much body fat as the people in the control group that only exercised. They also had a greater drop in their blood pressure. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot more there about blood pressure, but the point is, for somebody that is suffering from obesity and hypertension, this seems to be a wonderful uh, outcome where you're getting not only reduction in, in weight and in body fat, but also very positive results with hypertension. Now the congestive heart failure studies, um, there, were, there were a group of Japanese researchers that did three studies that they published. First, they looked at endothelial function in other words, the lining of the blood vessels and the at-risk group that they studied uh, showed a significant improvement in brachial artery dilation without using nitroglycerin to open up the blood vessels. It was almost as good as a dilation seen in the group of healthy men. So in other words, restoring circulation uh, works very well with far infrared treatment. Um, they did that versus a group that did bed rest only. So they did far infrared and bed rest versus bed rest only. And the uh, far infrared group experienced improvement while the control group had no change. They also had an improvement in clinical symptoms. In the third study, they investigated the, uh, the, the effects on patients with congestive heart failure who were experiencing PVCs, 
premature ventricular contractions. And they found dramatically lowered numbers of PVCs in the control group, or then the control group. So over 3,000 PVCs in 24 hours for the control versus about 800 for the treatment group. So huge positive effects on the heart and on circulation. One more to look at, and that is lymphedema, which also has a lot to do with heart and circulation, heart failure. So you get swollen extremities, swollen ankles, for example, swollen feet. And after far infrared treatment on the main four components of, or they study the main four components after far infrared treatment. And those are fluid, fat, protein, protein, and hyaluronin. I always hear it as hyaluronic acid, but hyaluronin in a total of 32 patients. And the bottom line is this, the swelling went down. Significant decrease in limb circumference measurement, improved quality of life. Uh, laboratory studies showed decreased deposition of fluid, fat, hyaluronin, and protein, all improving the swelling condition. So there we have it for studies. And I know that there was a lot there. I kind of went through it fast. I did that on purpose. The main thing I want you to remember is that there is much available in terms of studies. There are a lot of very positive reviews. And as I mentioned, this has been done for thousands of years and done very safely. So in that vein, let's start talking about sources of far infrared. Well, of course, there's sunlight. We talked about that with some obvious drawbacks because along with the far infrared, you also get the ultraviolet. And so you have to limit your exposure or you have to use chemical sunblocks. And when you do that, then there are questions about the safety and plus it's winter. So sunlight, not so good. Now there are far infrared saunas. And I wanna take a minute and talk about sauna if I may, because this is a really important concept to think about. Sauna has been used for literally thousands of years as a health modality and um, typically used in the Scandinavian countries. You have this tradition where you go into an extremely hot sauna. That's a small room built. You've got the fire, um, the coals. You've got heated stones. You pour water on the stones and it makes steam. You have a steam sauna. You go in there for an exposure and then you go immerse in cold water and then back into the sauna, sometimes two or three times. And this tradition not only has been going on for thousands of years, but it's still very active today in Scandinavian countries. I was reading some studies out of Norway about the effects of sauna and very positive effects. Now, the fact that they use heated stones in the saunas is really important. It not only gives them a way to produce that steam and increase the humidity by pouring water on the stones and letting it turn to steam, but also heating the stones has an important effect in that it produces far infrared. Remember, there's that whole range in the spectrum of heat. There's near infrared, medium infrared, far infrared. All of that is coming from the coals. And so you're getting a big mixture, but by using the heated rocks through a process that I'll explain in a few minutes, you actually increase the far infrared. And so sauna has traditionally been a wonderful way to do this. It's been used safely for a long, long time, and it's, uh, it's proven, it's positive. Um, but not all of us have room for a sauna or can afford a sauna. And frankly, um, it's sometimes hard to remember to take a sauna in our, in our busy lifestyle where it's not a, a traditional part of our life. But if you get a far infrared sauna with the proper kind of far infrared emitters, they actually stay cool to the touch. It's really weird. You have these emitters in the walls that are cool to the touch and yet they're emitting all this heat. The sauna walls themselves don't get that hot, but all of the heat, it's radiant. It actually penetrates and you're kind of heated up on the inside. Another way to get good far infrared is with far infrared treatment lights. Of course, then you only get a smaller area and some of those lights can be quite expensive and not that convenient to use. Um, and then there are natural sources of far infrared light. And I want to talk more about those natural sources. This is where it starts to really get interesting. First, I want to talk about natural jade stone. So as you know, 
Jade has been treasured and used for healing for millennia. It's considered precious in many cultures, uh, even magical. And one of those quote unquote magical powers that we have is that no matter what wavelength you put into Jade, it takes that wavelength and it modifies it and it emits far infrared, very specific wavelengths of far infrared. So you can heat it up with whatever heat source you want and it will convert it for you. It's like a free converter. So um, one way that that happens and has happened traditionally for literally thousands of years is through the use of jade jewelry. Here's an example. I have here this little jade pendant. It's on a string. It's designed to be worn around the neck. You put this jade pendant on, you wear it around the neck, and it's right here kind of over your heart, over your heart chakra too. Well, if you put that in your clothing, it's going to get warmed by your own body heat. And guess what it's going to give off? It's going to take your body heat, receive it, and then it's going to convert it, and it's going to radiate far infrared. And it's going to radiate it right here over your heart. Now, do you remember we talked earlier, there were some studies about the effect of far infrared radiation on circulation and on the heart. This is a win-win. Can you see why people were using and have, have used natural jade stone literally for thousands of years? It's a free far infrared emitter that you don't have to have electricity to use. You just have to get it warm and it does the rest. So really cool. There are other stones that do this as well. I get asked about amethyst, for example. And amethyst also has this property and does a nice job. The difference is amethyst is unfortunately not nearly as available. And um, there's one of the best supplies in the world is now constrained and it's no longer um, allowed to be mined. It's, it's been kind of closed off by governments. And so um, amethyst is therefore expensive and tends to come in very small pieces where you get crushed stones rather than jade where you can mold it, shape it, polish it into whatever size and shape you want. So that's the difference with amethyst versus jade. Both of them are great. Both of them are effective and they both have this wonderful property, but jade is just more available. Now let's talk about tourmaline for a minute. This is another one of those quote unquote magic stones. It's a boron silicate mineral. Um, it's known as a gemstone when it's in its crystalline form, although it's you know more commonly found in the form you're seeing on the screen. And when it's milled into fine powders, it does the same thing. When you heat it up, it emits far infrared. And it's cool because you can control the wavelength of far infrared you get based on how finely you grind the powder. So you can tune this to get the wavelength you want based on the grind. Really cool. And its other benefit, its other kind of secret superpower is that it produces negative ions in great abundance when it's heated up. And we'll talk more about negative ions in just a moment. But remember that tourmaline has this cool ability to create negative ions. Jade does as well, but tourmaline creates much more. So negative ions, let's talk about that a bit. Negative ions are invisible molecules and molecules, I'm using that term a little loosely, but it's good for our purposes now. Invisible molecules in the air, naturally produced in abundance by things like waterfalls, beaches, where you have moving, crashing water, higher elevations like mountaintops, you tend to find more negative ions. These are the antioxidants of the air in nature. And, you know, we think about the term negative ion and golly, that sounds negative. I don't want negative ions, right? But actually, negative ions clean up free radicals that have a positive charge. They neutralize them. And so they are a very good thing in our lives. I remember when I was a kid, I was, I was really into uh, electronics and, and building things. And one of the projects that I was looking into building one time was a negative ion generator that you could make for your home. And this thing would sit there and it would just fill the air with negative ions and it would make the air feel fresh. You'll find that you have um, hair dryers that produce negative ions. You're seeing this on a number of devices now to produce positive effects in the air. And as a bonus, you also, when you inhale these negative ions, 
studies have shown you get improved mood, it uh, is antidepressant, it combats depression, and it boosts the feeling of energy. Just inhaling air that's rich in negative ions. And you've experienced this. You've stood near a waterfall or perhaps on a beach. You talk about breathing that sea air. Well, that sea air that you're breathing is filled with negative ions, and that's why it's so rejuvenating to the soul, why it feels so good. On the mountaintops, the same thing happens, only instead of the action of water producing the negative ions, it's the action of sunlight. When you're on a mountaintop at higher elevation with less atmosphere, you tend to have more negative ions due to the action of ultraviolet light striking the air. Well, the problem with some negative ion generators is that they're electrical. And using electricity to produce negative ions is fine, except you get a byproduct called EMFs. And we're going to talk more about EMFs coming up next. But using natural stone to produce negative ions avoids the EMF production. And that's why Jade Vitality heating pads, the heating pads that we use, are so great because they provide all the benefits of the healthy air and negative ions using the natural properties of heating the tourmaline and and the jade to a lesser extent. So we talked about the science, we talked about far infrared, we've talked about the studies, we've talked about the biology, and we've even talked about the stones. But that's not what you came here for. We said this was going to be about better acupuncture treatments. And we wanted to talk about why this is so important in acupuncture. So let's get into that. It really comes down to the functions of blood in TCM. In traditional Chinese medicine, blood is called shui. And the function of blood or shui is to moisten, moisten all the tissues, nourish the entire body, and support the shen. The shen is the, is the spirit, the psyche. And blood does all of these functions. It's considered to do all these functions in traditional Chinese medicine. Blood is considered yin in its nature, while qi is considered yang. And blood and qi are kind of two, two sides of the same coin. They always work together. They travel together. They work in concert. Blood is the mother of qi, and qi is the mover of blood. So blood nourishes the zong fu. The zong fu produce the, the, the qi and move the qi throughout the body. And the qi, in turn, nourishes the, the organs that produce blood. So you get this beautiful cycle, this yin and yang cycle. And if you focus just on one or just on the other, well, you're really just doing half the equation. Blood and chi are kind of a package deal. They kind of come together. And this is really important because when we talk about blood in Chinese medicine, if you're not focusing on it, you can have things like blood deficiency, where the patient is dull, tired, forgetful, they have dizziness, numbness, blurred vision, lethargy, or you have blood stagnation where it's not deficient, but it's not moving well. And so you'll end up with sharp pain in a fixed location, chronic pain in a fixed location from blood stagnation in Chinese medicine. Now, we could argue all day about the Western perspective and about is there really a problem with circulation or not, et cetera, but I think we would all acknowledge that both viewpoints recognize the primacy of circulation as highly important to the proper function of the organism. That's just a fact. If you have poor circulation anywhere, you are going to have poor function, disease. Ultimately, you're going to end up with uh, tissue destruction if you don't have proper circulation. So the interface between far infrared therapy and Chinese medicine concepts, the interface is blood. Because as we spent the first half of this webinar talking about, far infrared has been proven to improve circulation, promote angiogenesis or new blood vessels, new routes of circulation, lowers blood pressure, improves heart function, decreases inflammation. All of this is about moving blood. So when you think about treating a patient, you're going to use a needle uh, if you're an acupuncturist. I assume that many on the call today are. And by the way, while we're talking, reminder, feel free to type questions, and we are glad to answer those questions during the, during the class today. We'll be looking at some of those in a few minutes. Uh, 
Oh, I see what you did there, Dr. Kimberly. Had a mind to invent things. Yeah, some of my inventions were more embarrassing than others, but uh, we won't go into that. Um, <laughs> Danette says, my best experience was neg with negative ions was being at Niagara Falls. Felt so good, amazing, didn't want to leave. Yeah, you get it, exactly. Well, so back to blood then. If you're a, Ch a Chinese medicine practitioner, you're doing acupuncture, for example, you're using a needle and you're counting on that needle to do all of the moving, to push the chi, to move the blood, etc. That's great and that works and it's been done for thousands of years. But if you have an added advantage that you've already freed the channels using far infrared, you've already opened the blood vessels, you've already improved the circulation, then moving the chi and moving the blood with your needle acupuncture or even non-needle acupuncture is going to be that much easier. So what does it mean to your acupuncture treatment? Well, if blood is moving freely, so can chi. The Zong Fu, the entire body are all nourished. And I was talking with Kimberly about these concepts earlier, and she chimed in with a couple of great things as well. Kimberly, do you want to jump in and share a bit what, uh, what you were telling me about treating on the front, treating on the back, and so on? I thought that was really great. Yeah, so what I have recognized is I love living in a day and age when we can use modern science and understanding. Blood is, is sort of that, um, that bridge between Eastern and Western medicine. Blood is something that obviously Western medicine understands. You were just talking about that. And from Chinese medicine, it is, it is the foundation of all of the work that we do. And I know that in years past and back when I was in college and I was using a lot of the traditional, um, only the traditional, because I still use some, but when I was only using traditional aspects to move chi and blood, you might have to add heat for moxa um, in order in order to get the blood moving. So you wouldn't just use a needle, you would, you would add some other element. You might add zhen gu shui or some warming liniment, or you might add moxa, or you might um, do some gua sha. Those were all ways to enhance a needle treatment. And what I'm finding is the absolute beauty and simplicity of putting a patient on the table. And I use a lot of distal um, needles a lot on the hands and feet, limbs, you know, the distal parts of the body. And when the patient is lying on their back and I put needles in their hands and feet and they're laying on the Jade Vitality mat and they have that far infrared heat all along the back shoe points. So there is, there's a window, there's an opening to every single acupuncture pathway on the back through the back shoe points. And when the patient is laying on their back and energy is helping me to move chi and blood from the trunk, from the back of the body while I'm treating with the needles, it's absolutely phenomenal and I can move chi and blood faster. And the same goes for if the patient is face down and whatever work that I'm doing, it then that heat is penetrating through the front moo points and getting directly to the organs in that way. So I feel like I'm getting help from the center core of the body. And that's where all of those internal pathways need to go. And it has just enhanced my treatment tremendously. Very cool. Um, yeah, I've heard the same thing from, from a lot of practitioners. And I've got, in fact, I've got a couple of stories to tell about that, that I'll talk about in a few minutes. And I know you have some too, but thanks, Kimberly. I appreciated particularly that insight about all of the back shoe points or all of the front move points. Um, you can have a tremendous effect on the meridians just by using the far infrared heat on the front or on the back of the body during treatment. A little earlier when you were talking about all of the symptoms that far infrared could help with based on uh, the modern um, research that you had been doing and you were talking about allergic rhinitis. I actually, when I was first exploring with the Jade Vitality, I was recognizing that when a patient laid on their back and it it reached the Tai Yong channels, so it, it reached the small intestine channels that come up through the shoulders and the UB channel that comes all the way down the back. And so when you are creating blood flow through those two pathways, you're boosting the immune system. That's where um, 
that's where the Wei Qi begins its fight. So creating that circulation at that level is really huge. You also mentioned, um, so chronic pain and irritability. I was thinking of liver qi stagnation and when blood isn't moving and that liver becomes stagnant, there's always blood stagnation, blood and qi stagnation involved in those two. And then you were also talking, the one final one and I'll move and I'll stop, but you were talking about uh, the lymphedema and the obesity. And when you have a patient that's heavily phlegm damp, you need all the help that you can get to move chi through those pathways because it's thick and it's sluggish. And you'll put a needle and it'll be, it, you're hoping for a fantastic effect immediately, but if you can have the help of the infrared penetrating those acupuncture pathways, then you get where you're going faster. Yeah, absolutely. Outstanding. Great insights. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All righty, so let's keep going here. Uh, when we talk about natural jade stone, um, jade also produces negative ions. We mentioned that earlier. From the metaphysical perspective, jade resonates with and opens the heart chakra. And I earlier I showed that pendant I have that kind of hangs over the heart chakra. Heart chakra traditionally is green, hence the jade resonance with it. So there's lots of positive effects from using natural jade stone. But we need to talk about EMFs. EMF stands for electromagnetic field, and it is emitted from any electric wires that have electrical current running through them. So I don't care if you have wiring in your walls or wiring uh, in a machine. Um, you could have a motor, you could have an appliance, you could have a computer sitting in front of you, all of these things because they're doing electrical work, they create EMFs. That's just a fact. Um, some evidence indicates that certain types of EMFs or certain frequencies can be harmful, particularly with prolonged exposure. And uh, this, this is beyond debate that certain frequencies are harmful. I mean, microwaves, for example, you don't want to microwave your tissues, that's harmful. Um, the bigger question that people debate about is what about these lower level EMFs, low level long-term exposure? And in our modern life, we have so many sources of EMFs in our homes, in our workplaces, the cars we drive, we are constantly in artificial electrical fields. This is not what our bodies are designed to handle because this is such a new invention. There's, of course, background radiation all the time coming from the sun, but it's minuscule. And we have fields that are hundreds and thousands of times stronger than the background that we live within every day. And it's just part of normal life. The problem is that there's a rising field of study about people who are actually developing sensitivities to these EMFs, developing health problems because of them, etc. And the abundance of caution seems to indicate that we need to limit our exposure to EMFs and electrical fields. Because of that, we certainly wouldn't want to suggest that you take a patient, put them on a table and bathe them in an electromagnetic field while you're trying to treat them. That seems really counterproductive. And so I wanted to, to show you this. This is kind of the secret sauce. This is something that we haven't shown before. This is how the Jade Vitality heating pads operate free of EMFs. First of all, look at the wiring that's used. It is not copper wiring. It's all carbon fiber. Because it's carbon fiber, it actually does not produce very much EMF at all. It produces very small amounts. And that's due to the fact that it's a carbon fiber carrier. Then there's high temperature silicon insulation that won't be damaged. And then there's another layer of shielding. So all of the wiring in the, in the heat conductors in the uh, Jade Vitality pad is shielded. That means any EMFs that are generated by the current going through the carbon fiber are caught, are blocked by the metal shielding and safely disposed of. That's why when you test the Jade Vitality mats with an EMF meter, you find out that there's almost nothing coming off them. It's, it's really at the level of background. And there's a video on our website 
If you go to jade-vitality.com, you can look at the video. It's in the practitioner area. I'll talk more about the practitioner area in a minute. And you can see me live testing an active Jade Vitality mat and getting readings of zero on my EMF meter. And in fact, uh, I, I, I have these. I thought I'd bring them for show and tell here. These are three of my EMF meters that I use in the office for testing and used all three of these and found that the Jade Vitality mats uh, put off almost unmeasurable amounts of EMF. I'm getting far more exposure by standing here in front of this computer talking to you than I would get if I were laying on a Jade Vitality mat right now, enjoying far infrared negative ions and this cocoon of warmth and safety and comfort. So, uh, Frankly, I'd rather be there than here, but I'm going to take one for the team and I'm going to keep talking to you. All right. So aside from EMFs, the reason we recommend Jade Vitality, we call it the healthy heat, is because it, it checks all the boxes. These mats that we've custom designed and developed using all natural jade stones, using um, the, the proper tourmaline, which is ground and then the powdered tourmaline is put in ceramic discs and those discs then emit far infrared as well as emitting negative ions. All of that is included in the Jade Vitality. And if you are a practitioner, then when you go to the jadevitality.com website, remember it's jade-vitality, you'll see up at the top a link for practitioners, or you can just type the slash and put the word practitioners in there. There's special practitioner pricing available there as well as a lot of the videos that are going to show more of the in-depth information. Like for example, the video I just mentioned about EMF testing. So jade stones, tourmaline discs, negative ions, infrared heat, top quality details. Uh, we made these to be practitioner quality and quality really matters. I know that there's a lot of these pads on the market for good reason. People are recognizing the benefits right away. Uh, people use these and feel wonderful. They get full body pain relief. It can be used on any part of the body safely. Um, externally and internally, it creates an, a, a wonderful environment, but you have to be cognizant of the quality and the type of the pad that you're getting. I'll show you a little more about that in a moment here, but Kimberly, you popped in. What do you have for us? Oh, I was just thinking that uh, the last time I went to FSOMA, which is a really big acupuncture convention in Florida, and I brought the I brought Jade Vitality with me, and it was the biggest hit. Practitioners were so grateful because finally there was a pad that was affordable. Because there are others on the market, and I myself, I think I've been bugging you for years that we needed to create our own pad because the pads out there that were $2,500. I wanted one, but I didn't want just one. I wanted one for each treatment room and one for home. And so when we brought it to Florida and the practitioners were laying on it, it was the favorite corner in of the whole weekend, the place to relax and feel the warmth. And then there was, when we go to the acupuncture convention in Florida, there's a woman who runs a booth that's filled with magical stones. And when you were talking about the stones, I, I pulled I pulled some of the ones that I bought from her booth this last year. Here's some jade uh, bracelets and a necklace. But she's got amazing magical stones and this is her gift and her talent. And um, so she came over to test approve the Jade Vitality mat and she laid on it and she's like, oh my goodness this is doing everything that it's supposed to do. It, it was kind of fun to watch her and hear her tell her experience from all the other practitioners on it. So I just thought that was a fun story to add. <laughs> cool, I love it. I get to meet all the cool acupuncturists all over the world and all the places that I go. And it's just amazing to me that practitioners are just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Finally, it's one where I can have a pad in every treatment room. Yeah, it's a fourth of the price. I mentioned earlier there are there are other great pads on the market. Um, amethyst, unfortunately, being cost prohibitive, it, you know, if you can spend a couple thousand dollars a pad, you can get really uh, nice stuff. But you can get every bit as nice and perhaps better 
uh, for a lot more affordable with what we've put together. So that reminds me of a story, by the way, you said, and you never told me that she came and laid on it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I, uh, there's a practitioner that I see for, uh, for body work, for rolfing, um, you know, deep fascia release. And um, it's tremendous work. I absolutely love it. And he was using a, a table warmer and we talked about EMFs and so on. And he got really interested in what we had. And so I brought him one of ours and he started using it. And I went back, you know, a month later, I hadn't talked to him. I went back a month later and uh, he was so excited to see me. He says, oh, I got to tell you about that pad. That is so much better than what I was using. My patients love it. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know, of course, of course. But then he said something that stuck with me. He said, I like being in the field when I'm working on patients. I enjoy the treatments I give so much more because I'm in that in that field with the patient. And I never got that from the other pad I was using. And I'm like, wow, that's that's really cool. Healing all the way around, right? Yeah, yeah, good for everyone. All right, so using using a pad like this, I think that's a great segue actually into the external environment about the patient. We've talked a lot about the internal environment. We talked about the flow of the chi and the blood and, and the effects of far infrared and negative ions, and that's wonderful. But the external environment around the patient as well. Think about that patients are coming to you um, probably from, well, in the wintertime, they're coming in from the cold. Uh, their body is struggling. They're, they're, of course, there's a reason this is cold and flu season, and it, I think it has to do with the fact that we become more susceptible when we're dealing with fighting off cold and Wei Qi gets exhausted and compromised and we don't have the immunity and the resistance that we did. And so creating that external environment around the patient where they, they can be in a place where they're receiving all of the good things without the bad, you know, they're not laying in a field filled with EMFs, but they are getting the negative ions, the fire infrared and a wonderful treatment from you. It has a tremendous effect for them, not just internally, but externally as well. And even in the summer, and we've talked about this before, in the summer, it might be 100 degrees outside, people are really hot, and then they walk into your air conditioned clinic and experience a 30 degree temperature drop that's a shock to the system. And now they're laying there, perhaps they're perspiring from being outside, they're not, they don't have many clothes on, they're laying on your table and they're cold. And now you're trying to treat them while they're cold and feeling chilled. Again, have, in the summer, having them lay on a Jade Vitality mat is comfortable. It's not hot. It's warm. It's inviting. It makes all the difference. Oh, clinical stories. This is a part for you, Kimberly, to talk about some of the stories you've told. But before we do that, I wanted to jump ahead for a moment and I wanted to talk about quality, and then we're going to come back to clinical stories. And the reason I want to talk about that is, uh, as I mentioned before, there are lots of other pads on the market. And of course, there's cheap knockoff stuff. You would expect that with anything that's good. So well, a couple of things to look for when you're shopping for a pad. Number one is how many discs are there? Um, sometimes there are, uh, there are pads out there. I've seen them. I bought one that it's a great big pad with just a few discs in the center and they and they sell you on the size of the pad. Oh, look, it's the size of a bed. You can lay on it. And yet when you uh, actually count the number of stones, count what it's actually emitting, it's very minimal because guess what? The stones cost money. Good quality jade costs money. And therefore you've got people that are uh, selling not much and trying to just go cheap and win on price when what they're selling is really kind of junk. The other, and here's an example. If you look at this, th this is from a video where I did a head-to-head -head comparison of a cheapo pad I bought off Amazon. And there's all these stones that are spaced really far apart and they're junky and they're broken and they're not polished. And then they put this stitching to kind of fill in the gaps so the stones don't look so far apart. That one on the left there has that orange stitching around each stone but it had less than half the stones of the Jade Vitality pad that you see on the right. You're just paying for a lot of empty space. So it had a lot of other problems too in terms of the quality, but 
the main thing is I measured it for EMFs and it was like putting your patient on a rotisserie. It was just roasting with EMFs. I put the meter two and three feet above the pad and it was still giving alarms. Whereas with the Jade Vitality pad, you're not gonna get any of that. So let's jump back to some clinical stories. Kimberly, you had a couple that you wanted to share. Uh, go or go right ahead. So in my clinic, I specialize in chronic pain and fibromyalgia. And when Jade Vitality was first introduced, of course it came to my clinic first and um, I just began experimenting and exploring and seeing what changes happened. And so I have this husband wife team and they are the cutest. So he comes in first and he's laying on the Jade Vitality pad and he's like, wow, I think my, I think my wife would really like this. And I said, I could get you one. So he, he bought a pad for me and he took it home. It was their anniversary and it was a surprise. And so that I believe was, I think he showed up, I think he showed up on a Wednesday to pick up the pad. And then I saw his, he gave it to his wife on Thursday and I saw his wife the following Tuesday. And she has fibromyalgia, she has chronic pain. I've been treating her for years. I know what typical graphs look like for her. They're pretty, she's high stressed. They're pretty imbalanced. So she comes in and she looks at me and she says, my life has changed. And I said, what happened? And she said, well, the only thing that I have done different is lay on that Jade Vitality that, your hus that my husband brought home and I've laid on it for 30 minutes each day and it is so warm and it is so nice and I just love it. She says, I can't wait to see my graph. And she says, and I haven't had any pain. So I graphed her and we literally had an all green graph. Her, green, her graph was 100% green. And that's cool all in and of itself. But when I, would put, when I put my hands on her body, everything just changed. The elements of what I felt under my hands, everything had softened. softened. My hands could go deeper. Um, it was really, really phenomenal. So that that's my favorite. Um, I have multiple patients who now own the pad at home. If they are in chronic pain or um, it's, I've got some chemotherapy patients who are using it because of uh, to deal with pain and to deal with emotions, to deal with blood flow. Anyway, it, it's just been a fabulous addition to the clinic and for fibromyalgia patients, it's a game changer. And then you were talking about how it, when it's cold in the clinic and that sterile environment, well, when a bot, when the body is cold, it's really hard to get through that mus muscular tissue. Um, it used to take a lot of massage work to get through. And now when the patient lays on the pad and I turn them over, their muscles are soft and they're ready to go. And the other effect that I've noticed is Patients who are cold and everything is stiff and you put a needle in them and everything hurts, once they lay on that pad and everything relaxes and I put a needle in, there, there's no pain because when you're tense and tight and you put a needle, then it causes pain. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> We've all been there. That's really cool. Thank you. I, can, I, can I show this? Is yeah, this yeah. Go ahead. I was going to, I was hoping you would. Okay. So, um, with our packages, uh, our practitioner packages, let's see, Sharon told me, the- um, The combo pack, pack. The combo pack. So with a combo pack, I, when we were creating this whole everything to, to put it out, we didn't wanna just give you the J Vitality mat. We're like, wouldn't it be nice if there was a blanket involved? And wouldn't it be nice if there was an eye patch? And wouldn't it be nice if there was a meditation? So our whole team came together. It was really fun to um, work with everyone. And we have those who are into meditating and they did the meditation and we handpicked our colors just specifically, but this blanket is soft and squishy and wonderful. And anyone, if you already, Lori I'm seeing is posting over in the, um, in the chat section, if you have touched the blanket, tell us about it uh, in the chat because the blanket is so soft and so yummy and so delicious. Is, are those good words? I, I don't even know how else to explain them. It, it's so soft and patients just love to snuggle into it. And, and it's not heavy, it's very light. Somebody, somebody actually asked the question, 
if you put a blanket over the mat, does that diminish the effectiveness of the far infrared? Yeah. And no, oh, it, it penetrates right through, no problem. Where you know visible light can be blocked by a blanket, uh, far infrared, the longer wavelengths aren't as blocked at all. And you should put a blanket. My you don't want the pad direct on the on the skin. I've got my pad. Here's my shoulder one here. So I'll give, a, I'll give a couple other uh, practical uses how I'm using it. So in my sure. clinic, I have it on the table and then I have sheet over it. So it just looks like the sheet when people come in. And then on a day when I have a no-show and I need to go relax and rejuvenate, or if I'm smart enough to schedule out time for the relax and rejuvenate, knowing that my patient could get an all green graph and knowing all of the benefits of what it can do for me, it is a fabulous self-treatment. So I'll sneak in my treatment room and I'll wrap myself up in this soft blanket and I will lay on the heated warm pad and I will do a meditation and it is my favorite 15 minutes of the day at the clinic. And then the pad that Dr. Larson has over his shoulders, you wear it so well, so handsome. Thank you. It is a favorite here at the office that um, if anyone who works here is having menstrual pain and menstrual cramps, they will take that and they will sit at their desk and it will sit right on their lower abdomen and it literally with think about it what what are menstrual cramps it's blood stagnation so if you are using it on your belly when you're having menstrual cramps and you're getting the blood moving and the chi moving it is phenomenal for menstrual cramps yeah yeah and not only that but you get shoulder tension and tightness when working at a computer for a long time it's a wonderful way to ease that to feel energized while you work um, particularly if you're feeling cold, we're hitting that time of year here in the office where people that work at desks are wanting to turn on their space heaters and so on. And this is a wonderful way to experience some warmth while you're doing that. I was mentioning not direct on skin. You do want something, some kind of a buffer. So the shoulder pad, when it's on your shoulders, then you have a buffer there. For the pad that's uh, the full body, having the blanket down and then laying on it or some kind of a pad a sheet, something to uh, keep you from having direct skin against the pad. It's designed not for direct skin. So to answer the question about putting a blanket over the mat, yes, please do. I, I honestly think, I mean, obviously we have AccuGraph and we have all kinds of cool tools, but this is, this is, this was an amazing production that came together here at Meridia. With the research that you did to come up with the right stones and to create it, and the science behind it, along with all the creative energy to create it and the clinical experience. This has been a fun, this has been a fun journey. Yeah, I, I agree. One of my favorites. A um, couple of other quick things to cover. I'm going to jump in here. I'll turn off my camera. We already talked about quality, uh, making sure that you're getting something that's low EMFs, that's good quality, that's using the proper materials and doing it right that has a warranty, that has service and support based in the US. All of these things, of course, are uh, what we offer. We have options available for 110 and 220 volts. So if you are in a 220 volt country, we can take care of you. And for practitioners, we have the opportunity where you can buy at wholesale and you can sell to your patients. And I know that Kimberly, you have patients that have bought these and taken them home. I know other practitioners that are doing this. Some I know some practitioners who've sold quite a quite a large number of these. Their patients absolutely love them and want to have one in their own home. And we encourage it because you may recall in the studies that I cited earlier, cumulative treatments are where you get these effects. Those studies, none of those studies were about somebody got one 10 minute treatment and had all these wonderful things, but they might've gotten 14 treatments over the course of two weeks, one treatment every day for 15 minutes. That's how you see these cumulative effects and actually start making long-term changes in the body. So if you go to jade-vitality.com and it is practitioners, then, um, whoops, I just clicked on the wrong thing, I apologize jade-vitality.com and its practitioners, then you can uh, pick up pads at special practitioner pricing, and you can also look at whatever specials we have for practitioners right now. 
So this kind of brings us to the end of our presentation and I am ready to answer questions. Anybody who has questions about anything we've talked about today, go ahead and bring them up now. I uh, see one here, it says, can the Jade Vitality mat be safely used during pregnancy? If so, is it possible to use it in an upright or reclining chair as the moms cannot lay on their back? This is a great question. And there's a couple of things I'd like to say from the scientific perspective. And then uh, Kimberly, if you have anything to add, we'll throw that in as well. But from a scientific perspective, there is some concern about using far infrared directly on the fetus. Now, like up on your shoulders, on your back, something like that, totally fine. We talked about depth of penetration, fetus being out front, totally fine. But out of an abundance of caution, so as to not raise the fetal temperature, we don't recommend using the Jade Vitality pad over the abdomen during pregnancy. Kimberly, what do you have? I use it on, um, I have a reclining table, so my table reclines upward and uh, I have no problem putting patients if they're lying on their back. I mean, it's going to take a lot for that pen penetration to get all the way through the spine and the bones and the ribs and the glutes and all the tissue in order to get to the fetus. So obviously I don't turn it up to the highest, highest temperature, but I, a comfortable place, it is fantastic for resolving pain. I do a lot of um, preparation for labor and delivery. So I'll have moms coming in during that very last month of pregnancy. And so have no problem using it. Yeah, and you know, by the time you're in the last month of pregnancy, um, the the risk to the fetus is much much lower than it would be during the first trimester for example um other questions let's see oh <laughs> got some great information here in the comments this is cool I've been using the jade vitality for the past two months on my patients with mat under the blanket and sheet on top the effects are extremely deep and i did my research before i bought brought it fully into my practice i'm an md lac Wow, thanks, Lori. That's really cool. Um, somebody, uh, Rena says, are there any other stones in there? So the stones are specifically jade and tourmaline. And the tourmaline, I mentioned before, in order to have its effects, and I love how we call them magic stones, but we all know it's it's science. It's not magic. We're not you know, trying to post some metaphysical woo-woo here, but this is actually scientifically studied. So holding up my pad here, these are the jade stones. They're green if the color is coming through, maybe it's not too well in the broadcast. And then the larger brown stones, these are the tourmaline discs where you grind the tourmaline into a powder of the correct um, density, the correct powder size or the correct fineness of the grind so that you get the right far infrared wavelengths out of it. And then that powder is baked into a ceramic disc and then that disc, when it's heated, it gives off the far infrared and the negative ions. So those are the two stones. There are no other stones included. And although I've, I've looked at all of the various information about other, other stones and their properties, in the end, it comes down to two things, far infrared and negative ions. Those are the scientifically provable things that I've been able to discern. And that's why we chose those two stones that we use. Um, okay, Danette says, is there a certain amount of time that the mat should be used before beginning acupuncture? Also, I'm assuming the mat should stay on for the length of the treatment as long as a patient wants it. Um, go ahead, Kimberly. What, what's your thought? I turned the mat, I turned the pads on in both my treatment rooms when I first arrived. And so my patients are actually sitting on the treatment table and I'm sitting next to them when I'm graphing them. And then when they lay down, they just, when they sit down, they're like, ooh, it's warm. And um, then when they lay down, it just begins the treatment. It, it begins the treatment right away. So I don't have them lay for a particular amount of time to prepare the body, but um, it just starts its effect. Kind of like the your rolfer who feels the energetic field just being in and around it. Perhaps the treatment is beginning before they even, before the treatment begins. 
Well, and I would add, there's nothing wrong. If you have a patient who is particularly tense, particularly cold, there's nothing wrong with having them lay on the pad five, 10 minutes before you insert the needles. Um, and certainly, you know, up to you to choose your approach. That, that would be great as well. I, I would also add, by the way, I tend to keep the temperature rather low. Uh, the pad is capable of going up very warm. I tend to keep it toward the lower end. I set it for 104, something like that. And to me, that's very comfortable without feeling hot, like, oh, I'm sweaty, I'm uncomfortably hot. To me, that's just the perfect oasis that this is just comfortable. You might mention here that 104 doesn't really feel like 104, correct? Correct, yeah. And you'll touch the you'll touch the the pad, and it won't feel that warm. It'll feel warm, but you're going that's not 100 degrees because it's radiant heat. The 104 is what you're going to experience inside the body being radiated in. It won't make your body temperature 104. Don't worry about that. But you'll feel the pad, and it'll feel kind of warm. But you'll like get on the pad, and you'll start to feel it deep inside you. Okay, um, next, can this be used while treating a patient with a biofeedback device? I don't see any reason why it couldn't. It shouldn't interfere with biofeedback at all. There's no EMFs, no electrical effects. So the only effect the patient is going to have is better circulation, better energetics. If you don't want that, uh, that artificial improvement coming from the pad, if you're trying to measure something specific, then you don't want the pad to make things look better than they really are because it, it can do that. Um, so that would be the only right? consideration. What's that? It can make a graph green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Any other questions before we go? Um, I see some I, folks and thanks. Go ahead. I have used it at the higher temperature when I'm getting sick. So in the Chinese philosophy where you might take be in a sauna or take a hot shower and get yourself to sweating and then uh, go jump into bed and sweat out a sickness, I have used it at a high temperature wrapped in a blanket and allowed myself to sweat, then turn it off and then go to bed. So oh. there's another approach for treatment. So, yeah, you really can. You, you can treat it like a sauna, wrap it in a blanket and really initiate a good sweat with it if you'd like to. So yeah, it's wonderful you've got that flexibility. Good point. All right, um, don't see any other questions and we are past our time. And so we're gonna be signing off. I wanna thank everybody who joined us today. I hope you learned some valuable things. If you have questions, if you wanna know about pads, about quality, construction, anything like that, please reach out to us. Meanwhile, go ahead and visit j-vitality.com and if you're a practitioner, then hit practitioners and get the uh, practitioner specials that we have going on. And we will look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.